Welcome to the Underdog Pick'em Show on the Line Star YouTube channel. Alongside my co-host, Tyler Weeman. I'm Shannon Somerville, and we've got our top five player picks on Underdog Fantasy for Week 10 in the NFL. Tyler, I can't even believe we are already at double-digit weeks here. Week 10, halfway through the season pretty much. Turkey Day just around the corner. We gotta start it's ma- wild. making that money, uh, making that money, so we can afford holiday gifts right around the corner. I mean, you know, Santa's yeah, coming. My daughter, my daughter's uh, <laughs> Christmas depends on it, right? <laughs> Let's hope we cash it for Tyler's daughter's sake. Uh, last week we were we were close to five and zero. Last week we were four and one in our picks. So close. The only one that missed for us last week, as you can see, is Kirk Cousins missed on the passing yards there. Basically, I blame it on Dak Prescott leaving that game a little bit early, so couldn't quite push the Falcons a little bit more in their passing game. But hey, we did well on our other picks, so uh, hopefully you guys were able to cash in on some of those picks that we had last week. But if you weren't, let's go at it this week. Our picks we are finding on the LineStar app. The tool that we're using is called the Props AI tool. It specifically has a tab just for underdog fantasy, and what it'll do, it, it will compare line stars projections to what's on underdog so you can find some value there and if you haven't already do us a huge favor before we get into our picks for week 10 on underdog make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and comment below because a comment enters you into our contest if we go five and oh so close one randomly selected commenter will win a hundred dollars basically we're putting our money where our mouth is and putting together an entry on underdog whereby we're putting all all the entry on a nice flex ticket, putting $10 there. And if we win it, we're giving out the winnings to a randomly selected commenter as a thank you for all of your support and your comments and for helping us out in the good old YouTube algorithm world. Really appreciate the support. And if you've got any picks that are absolute locks for week 10, we want to hear about them in the comments. So we're all trying to help each other out and put together some winning entries. We want to see all the green entries this week on Underdog. All right, let's get it cracking here. Let's start things off with a New England Patriots running back, Ramondre Stevenson, higher than 52 and a half rushing yards. Line stars projections around 55, the consensus 53. Now you may be a little frustrated with him if you have Ramondre Stevenson on your fantasy team because he's been a little bit inconsistent this season. However, he is averaging 55 rush yards per game. So for this particular um, stat line, 52 and a half rushing yards. He's in a good spot because he is going up against a Chicago Bears rushing defense that is 30th in rush defense DVOA, allowing 110 rush yards per game. So if there is any week I feel comfortable betting on Stevenson, even though he's been inconsistent, it is this week against this defense. What's your take on this, Tyler? I mean, I I agree with this pick. Stevenson... You know, it's a little scary. He hasn't been that yeah. great running the ball, but James Conner, uh, 107 mm-hmm. yards on the ground versus him. Brian Robinson, 65 on the ground. Travis Etienne, he only had three carries for negative one yards, but Chubba Hubbard, 97 mm-hmm. yards. Kyron Williams, 94. Guys have, you know, continually been doing well against them. And I think uh, Stevenson is going to play a lot. He's going to get a lot of carries. And 52.5 just is not that high of a number for the amount of workload that he likely gets here. All right, let's keep it in the AFC East. And the running backs will go to Brees Hall for the New York Jets, higher than 27 and a half receiving yards. Line stars projection for Brees Lightning's receiving yards is 37.8. Consensus right around there too, around 38. And in fact, Hall's been averaging 36 receiving yards per game. So like all those numbers there, that checks out. And he's been over that 27 and a half mark in five of nine games this season and going up against. Okay. So the Arizona Cardinals defense in general, Teller, and I'm interested to hear your take on this. They've been so interesting because in some areas they're so good in others, they're kind of just middle of the road. And this is kind of an area where they rank middle of the road. They're 16th in receiving yards to running backs, according to uh, DVOA. What do you make of Brees Hall's opportunity here against this Cardinals defense? I uh, I mean, this Arizona defense has been much better than everybody thought it would be. Yeah. They've been tough against running backs on the ground, but through the air, it's actually been a positive matchup. We uh, have them with the on our team defense tool as a plus matchup in every metric for uh, the receiving game, more targets, more receptions, more receiving yards, all are for the positive in this matchup for 
Brees Hall. So I think we got to roll with it. And, you know, Cardinals have been a sneaky good D. It's kind of kind of interesting how much better they've been lately. We, uh, yeah, as a total for RB1, we do have them at the fourth toughest matchup versus Mm -hmm. running backs. But like I said, there's just a big bump up in that receiving game. And I just think it'll be interesting to see how the Cardinals just play the Jets in general and kind of how teams moving forward play them because it's like you got Brees Lightning back there, but you also got to worry about Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams. So it's not like you can really send everybody to, you know, to the box. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how things play out. And I think a way to incorporate Brees Hall is to just get him going, get in the ball somehow. And actually what we've seen so far is Aaron Rodgers really – when he has to get the ball off quickly, which you know they're going to be sending some pressure in this one, it's likely going to Brees, Brees Hall. So I think yeah. that's something that's come up a lot. Yeah, and to put some numbers behind what I was saying too, over the last four games, mm-hmm. they've allowed six and a half receptions and 50 yards a game to the running back oh, wow. through receiving right. yards. So there's absolutely a path to this one. Yeah, here. so that Especially seems like the- how good he is and dynamic he is yeah. with the ball. The- Sure, and that's definitely the way to attack the Brees Hall play here. All right, Mm -hmm. next step, we are going to Tank Dell, wide receiver for the Texans, higher than 64.5 receiving yards. Now, Dell just had 126 receiving yards against the Jets last week. And what's really interesting here is he's got a decent matchup, but going up against the Detroit Lions here. But one stat I found interesting, Tyler, was the fact that the Lions play man coverage 41.8% of the time. That's actually the highest in the NFL. Now, they do have a very good success rate against it. It's top five. But Dell is great against man coverage, 23.9% target rate. And he's also 11th in his receiving grade against man coverage from PFF. So he does well against man. And it'll be interesting to see how he does against this Lions defense. But he's in a good spot, most notably because the volume's there for him. Diggs is out for the season. Nico Collins is still questionable. And the latest report we got on Nico Collins was that he's probably a long shot for playing in Sunday night's contest. So I like Tank Dell here, if for no other reason than the fact that he's going to get a lot of looks in this contest. Yeah, and I think the looks are the key point here. The other thing is that Lions 21st versus wide receiver one. They're 24th versus wide receiver two. So even if Nico Collins is back, he still has a very, very good matchup that, you know, he can succeed in. But without Nico Collins, without Stefan Diggs, he is the game in town and he's going to get peppered Mm. with targets. And those giant games that he was having last year or even last week, we're yeah. all games that he had a huge target share. And once again, I think that's going to be there. They're going to have to throw a lot versus the Lions, especially if Nico's uh, not there, just mm-hmm. because the likelihood of them staying in the game without Nico is a little lower. Absolutely. And the game environment in this one, high game total, 48 and a half. And it should be a pretty close contest or at least just three and a half points in favor of Detroit in this one. So I like the game environment that we're getting as well um, for the over there for Tank Dell. All right. Now it is time for you and I to pick our best picks on Underdog for Week 10. So who are you rolling with? I'm going to go with a little bit of a different one. We're going Bo Nix higher than 24.5 receiving yards. Mayfield just had 20 versus them. Purdy had 27. Lamar had his season high with 122. Burrow only had nine. And the rest of the uh, quarterbacks they have faced, you know, don't rush at all. So hard to really use those ones. But Bo Nix is averaging 32 per game. Over the last four, he's at 44 yards a game. KC is allowing 24.3 to the quarterback per game. But I think the biggest thing and the most interesting stat that I found is in losses, Bo Nix is averaging 39.3 yards per game. I don't Mm -hmm. think any of us really believe the Broncos are going to win this game. They may stay in it for a little bit, but this one likely goes as a loss. They are seven and a half point underdogs and 39.3 three average is much higher than 24. I feel like the Broncos have been kind of sneaky against the chiefs in recent years. However, the, they, the, the weather conditions in this one is a factor as well. They're calling for some pretty 
pretty bad weather, maybe some bad field conditions. And in that case, I kind of like the over here just on that fact alone because, you know, Brees or Brees Hall, Bo Nix is going to have to maybe have see some broken up plays, have to just take it himself a couple couple times and hey Bo Nix got a little wiggle so I think he, he can get does. there he's been <laughs> sneaky good yeah he does he definitely does all right for my pick I'm going to the Vikings and we're going with TJ Hawkinson their tight end higher than 36 and a half receiving yards as they go up against the Jags this week line stars projection for Hawkinson is 51 he had 27 last week just three receptions remember he's just coming back off of IR but last year he was averaging 64 receiving yards per game do I think he's going to have 64? No, I'm just saying that was his average. He's doing about half right now. That's all we're asking of him against the Jacksonville defense. That is 31st in pass defense DVOA versus tight ends. Three of the last four tight ends have not only gone over, they've gone way over with a lot of Ys there at the end there. Tucker Craft had 78, Hunter Henry 92, Cole Komet had 70, uh, Mo Ali Cox had 37, and he was the only one who didn't. Um, but Last week, Grant Calcaterra had 30, but they had no Dallas Goddard there. So I really like TJ Hawkinson's spot here against this Jaguars defense. Granted, he is kind of easing back into the season a little bit, but 36 and a half, I think he could get there um, on just a couple receptions. So TJ Hawkinson is my play here. Any, is he on anybody's fan? Is he on your fantasy team at all? I picked him up off the waivers. Curious to see how you, what you make of his projection for fantasy purposes this week. Uh, I don't know if I'd play him for fantasy. I mean, okay. if if you that have to, if you're struggling for <laughs> a tight end spot, he's absolutely playable. Mm -hmm. uh, my only worry is he only played 45% of the snaps last week. Sure. I would okay. expect him to that 50, 60 range, mm -hmm. but I think it's hard to really count on him for say like a 60 plus receiving day, which you would probably want for fantasy. Right. He would and have to have some come through with some touchdowns or something, but yeah, I, I like this line for betting with how much he's going to yeah. be out there because he's going to be only used on more key snaps, mm -hmm. you know, play half the game, maybe a little bit more still just won't be a full go, but that's why we're getting a low line on a guy that's exactly. as good as him. Exactly. So we're rolling with it on underdog. Just a recap of our picks here. Ramondre Stevenson, higher than 52 and a half rushing yards. Brees Hall, higher than 27 and a half receiving yards. Tank Dell, higher than 64 and a half receiving yards. Bo Nix, higher than 24 and a half rushing yards. And TJ Hawkinson, higher than 36 and a half receiving yards. Let us know what you think of our picks in the comments. Remember that a comment also enters you into our prop bets contest, but you also have to like this video and subscribe to the channel, of course. And if we go five for five, one randomly selected commenter will win $100. We will announce it on next week's week 11 underdog pick em show. So make sure to come back and check in if we go five for five and just check back in anyways let us know if you've got any absolute locks for this week week 10 is going to be a good one a lot of interesting games on the slate and let us know what you think if you're checking out some other picks make sure to check out the line star app and that props ai tool that'll help you specifically for underdog it has a tab just for underdog so make sure to check that out linestarapp.com good luck in all of your fantasy games this weekend good luck we'll see you next time